Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight, where today we're going to be taking a look at the second of the civs that was added in the first round of the Frontier Pass, and that is Lady Six Sky of the Maya. Lady Six Sky is a fairly unique leader in Civilization VI, just because she has some benefits that kind of push her towards playing a tall playstyle rather than a wide one. So for those of you who don't know the difference, wide means that you have a lot of cities, but each uh, individual city has fairly low population and isn't built up a lot. But playing tall means that you have a smaller number of cities and you have much higher population in those cities. So Lady Six Sky is someone who actually is capable of playing tall, which is generally not what is the case with a lot of the other civs in Civ VI. So her first ability is known as Ishmatulahau, and it makes it so that her non-capital cities within six tiles of the capital gain plus 10% to all yields. Her cities that are not within six tiles of the capital will reduce uh, their yields by 15%, and she also gets five combat strength on all of her units within six tiles of the capital. So Ishmatulahau is a really strong ability if you're able to utilize it correctly. So the theoretical maximum number of cities that you can settle within six tiles of the capital is 12. I'll throw up the little diagram here. But in most cases, you're not going to be able to perfectly get this because, you know, one spot will be blocked by a mountain or you'll get forward settled or something. So I wouldn't be, you know, don't, don't get too upset if you're not able to get this perfect city layout every single time. Either way though, plus 10% to all yields is really good, because that means, you know, quite literally all yields, any one that you could think of, you're getting plus 10% to, and this is especially good as you get later on in the game, because early on, whenever you're only making, you know, like, 5 science, getting 10% is only half, half of a science, which obviously is not that great, but later on, it's gonna scale up a lot more. This does mean that the penalty that you receive from having cities settled outside of those six tiles is also going to get progressively worse throughout the game. So generally, I would like to, or I, I, I try to keep myself within those six tile range. And the only reason that I would settle outside of that range is if I see a really good district adjacency spot or if there's, you know, maybe some other strategic reason that I would want to get another city that is outside of that range. The plus 5 combat strength to all of her units within 6 tiles of the capital is also really nice for defending. I find this uh, to be especially useful when you're playing deity and somebody attacks you in the early game. Uh, one thing also to note here is that it is to units that are within 6 tiles of the capital, not necessarily... So you can settle your cities that are that puts the city center within 6 tiles of the capital, but that doesn't mean that those cities' borders will be within 6 tiles of the capital. So just be, just be cognizant when you're playing Lady Six Sky that you're making sure that the units themselves are within those six tiles. Her second ability is known as Mayab, and it makes it so that settling adjacent to freshwater and coast do not provide extra housing, and instead each farm provides an additional plus one housing and plus one gold. She also receives plus one amenity for every luxury adjacent to the city center. So Mayab is a really good ability for Lady Six Sky just because it removes the necessity to settle on freshwater, so it kind of frees up your settling uh, available locations. And this is really good because it makes it easier to get those, those nice and compact city layouts that will get more cities within six tiles of your capital. I should also mention that if you do place an aqueduct down, you will get the full bonus of the aqueduct, so it will provide six housing as if you had originally settled the city not on water. So I would try to get an, an aqueduct in as many cities as you possibly can. Also, speaking of that and fresh water, uh, the farms, in order to get the effective bonus of having fresh water, you have to put down two farms in each city to uh, be able to get that. And one thing I want to mention is that you do have to be working the farm tiles to get that extra housing. The one amenity for every luxury adjacent to the city center is it's an okay ability. I, I would uh, much rather prioritize just getting that compact city layout that maximizes my number of cities within six tiles of the capital. And then I would have as a secondary goal generally uh, would be to get those cities next to luxuries. But I would definitely not focus on this because one extra amenity is not a ton. Now let's move on and talk about the Mayan's unique unit, which is the Hualche, which is a replacement for the Archer. So this unit has 28 range strength, which is 3 higher than the Archer. It also has 15 melee strength and 2 movement, both are which the exact same as the Archer. And its unique bonus is that it will provide plus 5 combat strength against wounded units. So the Hualche is a very strong unit. It's, uh, it's very nice that it replaces the Archer because that means you can upgrade from your Slingers directly into the Hualche. The extra bit of base combat strength is nice, and then also if you have multiple, multiple of these guys together, then you can really just tear people up by getting that 5 combat strength against wounded units. 
So this unit is very strong early on for a nice early power spike. So if you get like forward settled or something like that, this can be really good. It's also super strong for defense, especially if you have multiple of them, because if you're within those six tiles of your capital, this will also get an additional plus five combat strength, and it will be significantly stronger than pretty much any other unit in that era. So the Walche as a whole is a very strong, unique unit, and I would advise that you definitely make use of it in your games as the Maya. So now let's move on and talk about the unique district that the Mayans are able to utilize, and that is the Observatory, which is a replacement for the campus. So the Observatory will provide plus two science from each adjacent plantation, plus one science from every two adjacent farms, and plus one science from every two adjacent districts. In addition to this, it will also cost half of the usual uh, campus production costs. So just a reminder that district production cost scales throughout the game, so whatever a campus normally would be, the Observatory will cost half of that. So my opinion on the observatory is that it's okay, it's really not that much of an upgrade compared to the normal campus, I tend to think, just because it loses a lot of the benefits that the normal campus has. So with the observatory, you don't get adjacency from geothermal fissures, you don't get adjacency from reefs, you don't get adjacency from mountains, and thus it kind of just like, it's it feels more like a sidestep from the campus rather than an upgrade. I mean, the half production cost is definitely nice, but aside from that, in terms of adjacency bonus, I really don't think it's it's a lot better than the campus, and a lot of the time I've actually felt like it is significantly worse. This is very much, uh, it, it, it very much depends on your spawn though. If you have a lot of plantations, then this can be really, really strong and you can get very high adjacency on it. Or the other thing is that you can just surround them with farms and then you get plus three, which is nice because it will work with the one policy card that will then give you plus 50% science in that city. But either way though, as I mentioned, I really feel like this is more so of a sidestep. It just changes what you're looking for in a spawn when you're playing the Maya. Rather than looking for mountains and geothermal fissures, instead you're just looking for luxury resources or bonus resources that can be upgraded with plantations. So now let's go ahead and talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Lady Six Sky and the Mayans. So for their first strength, uh, one of the things that stands out about them most is that they can amass some really large populations. This is due to the fact that they get so much extra housing from farms, so it becomes very easy to place down a lot of farms, which will give you then both food and a lot of housing, which just allows your population to grow really large. The, it's it's not unusual in a game to reach like pop 20 on a lot of your cities as the Mayans and that's something that can lead to a lot of extra yields because you can put more specialists out or work more tiles. The other really nice thing is that you're really not restricted to settling on water whenever you're playing them just because of this ability to get the housing from farms so this really frees up where you can settle and it makes cities that would otherwise be terrible for other leaders not so bad for the Maya. This also works really well and it allows you to very much uh, to, to be a little bit more efficient in placing out your cities so that way you can get more of them within six tiles of your capital to get those extra bonus yields. As far as their weaknesses are concerned though, one that I found was that, so they are definitely 100% a science sieve, but they are kind of lacking production in a lot of cases. So to make use of them effectively, I feel like you have to be putting down a lot of farms, but if you're putting down a lot of farms, then you're probably going to be putting down less mines because you'll be having flatter terrain, or you'll be putting farms on hills instead, which obviously you can't put a mine there if you have a farm there. So for that reason, I found that this has been a little bit of an issue with them. It's not too terribly bad, but it definitely is lacking compared to some of the other science sieves in the game. The really big weakness of them, though, I think, is that they are very easily disrupted. So as I mentioned, the the ideal number of cities that you could get uh, whenever you're playing with uh, the Maya to get those six tile that six tile limit is 12. But it's very rare that you're ever going to get that because there are so many things that can disrupt your strategy there. Either there's random things like mountains or lakes or coasts or natural wonders that will block setting lo settling locations, or if you're playing against other people that are at all smart, they'll just forward settle you and block like three or four of your city spots, and then all of a sudden you're going to be losing 15% yields in a lot of your cities, which makes it very hard to do pretty much anything, as I'm sure you would imagine. So that is something that is a major weakness of them. In an ideal game, they're really strong, but a lot of the time they are not able to be lived up to their full potential. And now it is that time to give Lady Six Sky her tier ranking. So if you're new to the series, all that you need to know here is that these rankings are based on the traditional tier scale. So that means it goes S, A, B, C, D, F, with S being the highest and F being the worst. So for her domination ranking, I think that she deserves a C. She's borderline, I would argue, a D on domination. 
Uh, the one thing that is nice about her domination wise though is that she does get that extra combat strength if you are near her capital. So this means she can fight defensive wars very easily or if somebody forward settles her too hard then you can really wipe them out pretty fast whenever you are playing as her. So I definitely would not advise going for domination because then you're going to end up with a lot of cities that are without that are outside of the six tile range of your capital and those cities are going to be really really bad. So for that reason I think she deserves the C in domination. For science though, I think she does deserve an A. She is a pretty good science leader, I would say. So although I did rag on the observatory a lot, I think it still is a fairly good district. Just the fact that it has half production cost is pretty nice, and in some games, if you're able to get a good spawn that has lots of plantations, then you will be able to get high adjacency on these guys as well. In addition to this, the fact that you're just going to be getting plus 10% yields in a lot of your cities means that you are going to be getting some additional science and production, both of which are very important for science victory, and it becomes pretty easy when stacked with the observatory uh, that to get a lot of science throughout your empire. The reason that I didn't put her in S tier though is because of those production issues that I had talked about earlier, so she does have kind of the conflict of wanting to build farms but also wanting to build a lot of mines, and obviously you can't put those on the same tiles, so you run into a little bit of conflict whenever you are playing Lady Six Sky. She is still a really strong science leader though, and if you are going to play her, this is definitely the victory type that you should go for because she's far better at science than she is at anything else. For culture, religion, and diplomacy though, I think she does deserve C's in all of those. You can definitely play those those victory types when you're playing Lady Six Sky, but I really don't know why you would go for any one of them over science victory. So you do get plus 10% yields, which will apply to culture and faith, but the issue here is that there's really no avenue by which you can get those yields like in any other way. There's, she really doesn't have any bonuses to anything else, and these victory types don't really benefit as much from having high population as science victory does. So science victory, obviously, whenever you have high population, you can work a lot of tiles and get more production and also more science. But whenever it comes to culture and religion, that doesn't scale quite as nicely. You can put more specialists to get more of those yields, but aside from that, it's not going to directly correlate to your win condition quite as much. So for those reasons, I think she deserves C's in all of these victory types. As I mentioned, you definitely can play one of these, any of these victories, and you'll be maybe slightly better than average, or slightly better than having no bonuses, but still, it's not really that great in comparison to a lot of the other leaders. So for those reasons, I think she deserves C's. And for her overall ranking, I think that she deserves a B. She's definitely at least a good leader. I don't think she's that insanely strong or anything like that, but she is definitely good and she is more than playable. And she is pretty fun to play as well, just because of how different her playstyle is from a lot of the other leaders. So as I mentioned, there's really only one victory type you should ever go for for her, and that is science. Uh, so the 10% additional yields is pretty nice, and the observatory though, as I've mentioned, is in my opinion more of a sidestep from the campus rather than an upgrade. The lowered production cost is probably the best thing about it, but other than that, it really just changes what you're looking for in a spawn. So rather than looking for mountains and geothermal fissures and stuff, instead you're just looking for plantations and areas where you can throw down this observatory between farms. If you haven't played her yet though, I would highly suggest you give it a try because she is pretty fun and I did enjoy my time playing as her, but she definitely isn't as strong as some of the other leaders in the game, so for that reason I think she deserves the B. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. if you enjoyed the video feel free to like, if not feel free to dislike, if you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe, thank you for watching, and goodbye.